Right, we're, uh, we consist of uh, mechanical and collision shops uh, mm -hmm. throughout the state of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. We're mm -hmm. ASA Northwest. Uh, actually, we just turned ASA Northwest this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we were ASA Washington previously. Oh. And um, so we've uh, now cover the Oregon and Idaho market also. Uh, in Washington State, we have about 24% of the uh, shops uh, that we mm -hmm. consider would be viable, good members. Mm -hmm. uh, we have about 24.5% of those mm -hmm. uh, as members of the association. So mm -hmm. we have a little over 700 members total uh, with our mm -hmm. allied members, and those are supporting members of the association. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I speak to them daily. Um, we uh, work on putting uh, programs together, uh, healthcare programs. Uh, in fact, uh, that's big, one of the biggest projects mm -hmm. that we've been working on here lately is the healthcare with Obamacare. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, work on a retrospective rating program uh, we have laundry programs set up for our members. Mm -hmm. uh, we have credit card processing. We, we probably have a good 25 different programs set up for mm -hmm. our members to take advantage of discounts so it offsets the, uh, the cost of their dues. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the biggest groups that I talk in front of are probably 50 people to 75 people, mm -hmm. you know, and the smallest groups are like 15. Mm -hmm. um, when I go to the unit meetings throughout the, the states. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I talk about is I talk about our educational programs. We have the Automotive mm -hmm. Training Expo that we put on every year. Mm -hmm. uh, we had last year, we had close to 600 people attend that. Uh, we have 32 classes that we put on over a two and a half day period. We give discounts for ASA members. Mm -hmm. uh, we invite the whole industry to come in. Mm -hmm. uh, we started that project uh, six years ago and we start out with 172 people attending and now we're over 600. Mm -hmm. And then with our uh, allied members attending our trade show, uh, which is sells out every year uh, for the last three years, mm -hmm. um, we get about 900 industry people at the Doubletree SeaTac Airport mm -hmm. for three days. So it's turned into quite the event for us. Mm -hmm. And then we do two retreats a year, uh, one in the, uh, January and uh, one in June and that's where we have our annual meeting where our members come in and we give an uh, update of the association and the financials and mm -hmm. you know we're nonprofit so we give our financials to the membership uh, that attend mm -hmm. that and we also uh, have a training class that we put on there and we have uh, social events there we make it fun it's a uh, it's kind of a family atmosphere we have a mm -hmm. hospitality room every night that our allied members sponsor and we have hors d'oeuvres and and refreshments there for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, you know, I've never taken any classes. Mm -hmm. Never taken any classes. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, 13 years ago, uh, before I started this job, uh, the biggest group I ever talked in front of was about 10 people. Mm -hmm. So the first time I got up and I, I uh, talked in front of a group of people, uh, there was 100 and at an ASA meeting, and I had to read what's called a disclaimer. And I'll tell you, I ran out of air. You know, <laughs> it was it was uh, kind of. It was uh, kind of embarrassing, but it was kind of funny too, you know, because I just wasn't used to being, and the heart was run racing and everything, yeah. you know, and I, I was actually, the sweat was pouring off mm. of me, and I was just so nervous, you know. Now when I get up in front of people, you know, I just give them updates of what's going on in the industry, you know, what we're working on. Um, I have bullet points set up that I want to talk about. I don't mm. write a script out. Mm. Um, it's more like you and I talking right now. Um, we have a Q&A time where they mm -hmm. can ask me questions and uh, at the end of uh, every talk, my talks are only about five minutes long. Mm -hmm. Every time I try and keep them within five minutes mm -hmm. and because we have other guest speakers that come in and then we have uh, division reports and things like that mm -hmm. uh, at the meeting. So I just give an update of what's going on nationally with ASA National, what's going on legislatively. Uh, with the association, uh, the training classes coming up that we coordinate out of the office here. Um, and like uh, this weekend, we have a lights on program. Mm -hmm. So I ask for volunteers, we pass around a sheet, uh, mm -hmm. get volunteers. Uh, at Clover Park, we've asked them to have students uh, come and help us uh, install lights for free to the consumers. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, New Market Skills Center, uh, they have uh, 15 students coming. And then I have about Ten shops that are coming and bringing tools, and mm -hmm. so we change lights for the consumers, um, and we do that from nine o'clock until two o'clock on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, just being in the public eye, um, I was on television. Um, 
I probably did the least amount of work on a project uh, called the Leaks uh, Program. And uh, I stayed up to date, you know, I stayed current with, uh, you know, how that program was running and uh, Brian Kelly was actually the guy that was running with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they interviewed us for uh, a spot on television and I ended up being the only one that they, they put on television. So, you know, I got my 15 seconds of fame, you know, and I, <laughs> and I did the least amount of work, you know, but I was updated mm -hmm. and I knew exactly what was going on and I was able to speak to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just so much going on all the time that, uh, you know, that's why uh, I, to write it all, to script it all out is very hard to do uh, because especially if I'm talking about uh, like healthcare reform or I'm talking about something, normally someone can ask me a question in that time frame and if I'm on a script, mm -hmm. you know, it, it'll throw me completely off. So mm -hmm. it's just easier for me to have bullet points and I just, you know, I talk from the heart and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, let our members know what's going on. Yeah, um, a gentleman by the name of Steve Beck, uh, he's mm -hmm. out of Chicago. I actually worked with him last week. Mm -hmm. And we uh, had classes from Bellingham all the way down to Portland. So every night we had a different mm -hmm. class. And uh, we had a class in Bellingham on Monday, a class in uh, uh, Puyallup on Tuesday, a class in Olympia on Wednesday in a class in Portland on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of did that road trip uh, mm -hmm. right down the I-5 corridor. And uh, he is a wonderful speaker. Uh, he's a guy that, uh, he's always smiling, he's just full of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, he gives a three hour presentation. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've actually sat through a, a eight hour presentation of his uh, in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. And th the guy's just wonderful. I mean, he's mm -hmm. funny. Uh, he's just full of energy, keeps the uh, uh, audience uh, interactive. Uh, he's uh, written a couple of books, uh, How to Have a Great Day Every Day and mm -hmm. Leave Your Funk at the Door. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's just a great speaker. I, I just, he's a great friend. He's become a great friend mm -hmm. too. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He would be a, be a great person, a great mentor to come in and, and work with students. Mm -hmm. And he's worked with me. In fact, I'm going to take a class from him in two weeks in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Um, on public speaking. Oh. So he's putting on a class down there on public speaking. So mm. I'm going to take that class with him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's very important, as, uh, especially when you get up in front of people uh, not to embarrass yourself or the association. And, and you want to make sure that uh, you're providing the information. Uh, you know, and, and typically what I've found uh, uh, over this last 13 years of doing it, when I make a mistake, I'm actually the only one that knows that I made the mistake, mm -hmm. you know, or if I say a date wrong and I get corrected, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's not a big deal, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I always try and uh, uh, before I go, I know who my audience is. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a list of people that will be there. Uh -huh. uh, I have, uh, I know birth dates. I have them in my computer. I know anniversaries mm -hmm. uh, of uh, people that have been married for a long time. And so the first thing I do is I always m mention mm -hmm. those, uh, those folks, you know, happy birthday to them or happy mm -hmm. anniversary mm -hmm. and, you know, make it more personal, um, you know, from that standpoint. And it just, you know, it livens things up a little bit. Everybody claps. It gives me a little time to catch my breath, you know, because mm -hmm. when you first get up there, you're a little, you know, you're a little jazzed up and, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, they say it takes, uh, you know, two minutes to settle down. Well, that's about all I have when I get <laughs> to talk. So, so you know, I need that 30 seconds, you know, and uh, just to, uh, you know, thank people for being there and, and also to wish people happy birthday and happy anniversary mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Well, I think uh, uh, probably the, uh, the best speech that I ever gave was at an automotive training expo uh, when um, I stood up in front of the group and I talked for about uh, 10 minutes in regards to uh, what it takes to put a, a project on like that. And the volunteers that um, worked to put the, the program together uh, had each one of them stand up. I said a little something about each person that stood mm -hmm. up, you know, what their role was in putting the program together. Because it's not just us that does it, it's not just me. Um, yeah, we, we coordinate it, and I'm, I'm the producer of the show, but it takes a whole lot of people mm -hmm. to put a, a project on like that. So, 
you know, think in those folks. And I think that's probably the best one that I've ever done. I didn't mm -hmm. stutter. I didn't, you know, um, I got maybe a little emotional at the end when I was, uh, you know, there was a few people that it was because of them that it all happened. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but that's okay. Emotion's good, right? And, you know, uh, talking about somebody, mm -hmm. you know, when you talk about them, um, I, uh, I learn as much about them as I can mm -hmm. so that I can talk about them instead of uh, just mentioning their name and saying thank you. You know, I want to know more about them and uh, mm -hmm. the more that I know. And then I'll, I'll bullet point things out, but I, n I hardly ever write it out anymore. Mm -hmm. A gentleman by the name of Marsh Macy, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a Dale Carnegie instructor, mm -hmm. and he helped me out uh, with that. And a gentleman by the name of Jerry Smith is also a good mentor to me mm -hmm. on public speaking. In fact, he gave me a whole list of things that to do uh, before public speaking, so really, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I never stop. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there was a gentleman by the name of Pete Hunt, uh, past executive director here. I, in fact, uh, I worked out with him this morning mm -hmm. on the treadmill when we were at the YMCA, mm -hmm. and, and we talk, you know, about, uh, you know, we're, yeah, we're working out, but at the same time, we talk about, you know, the association, and mm -hmm. he's a great public speaker, even though he he says he's terrible, but I think he's wonderful, you know, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, uh, he gets very, very nervous when he gets up, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, so I've learned from him, you know, he's, uh, there's a whole lot of people that have helped me, uh, mm -hmm. you know, do the public speaking like I have. I still get nervous, believe me. Mm -hmm. I still get, you know, there, I, I don't think there's any way you get around not being jazzed up or, mm -hmm. you know, you get a little stomach butterflies going on mm -hmm. or a little heart palpitation, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, that's just, uh, that's part of the nature of public speaking. And, uh, you know, my mom, uh, my mom is deathly afraid. Mm. Oh, deathly afraid. I mean, that's the last thing she ever wants to do mm. is to public speak. And I, I mean, even getting up in front of five people, she, mm. show you know, her heart races, and you know. And so I, I, I learned that from my mom a long yeah. time ago that yeah. you know those things happen, and you know it's not for everybody. So mm. not everybody can do it, mm. and, you know, and it's not easy. I do. Um, uh, I like to tell funny stories, mm -hmm. you know. Um, when uh, uh, one of our employees retired, uh, Donna Washett, um, we uh, we had a um, going away uh, retirement party for her, and and uh, I stood up and talked about our history together because uh, we had worked together for uh, about eight years, nine years, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so uh, and she was my right hand person. Uh, now Brenda uh, has taken her place. And God bless Donna, she passed away. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, we were, uh, a story that I told at her retirement was uh, when we were at uh, Silverwood Park. Uh, we were, uh, Donna would never ride on any roller coasters or anything mm -hmm. like that. She was, she was like seven years old and you know, she would never do anything like that. And I got on the, what's called the corkscrew um, at the, at the um, event there. And, and uh, all of our members were there, and I was so excited when I got off that, and Donna was sitting down at the chair, and I, I said, you gotta go with me, come on, let's go, you know, and I grabbed her hand and, and uh, took her up there and got her, got her on with me, and uh, we took off, and uh, as, we, as that thing took off, all I could hear her say was, damn you, Jeff, <laughs> <laughs> and I said it sounded just like The Office. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I like to tell stories like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's humorous stories and fun stories and, you know, about uh, different situations that happen. Mm -hmm. So I always like to put those in my speeches. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think you ever get over the nervousness. You know, it's okay not to get over the nervousness because it keeps mm -hmm. you on your toes. Mm -hmm. it, it keeps you aware of uh, being in the game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's like, a, um, you know, I was uh, a wrestler and a football player, you know, mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, being in the game, you know, being being ready, preparing yourself uh, for what you needed, what you need to do, and uh, that's the most important thing. If you prepare yourself uh, to to go up and talk and just do the best that you can, you're going to have some nights that you're just not that good, mm -hmm. and you know it, you know, and you um, you can hone those skills by talking into a mirror, you know, and uh, I've done that a lot. Uh, I've done some hand things in my head, you know, I, this side talks to one side and this oh. side, that side talks to the other side because this side, you know, is, uh, you know, telling you, hey, you're really terrible. And this side saying, oh, you're not so bad, 
you oh. know. So, and I learned that from Steve Beck. So, well, you need to talk to the public. Um, you know, if you're a salesman, uh, you're a service advisor, uh, you work with the public, uh, you need to, even if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you need to have the ability to, to talk to them, you need to have the ability to uh, understand who you're talking to, you know, who they are, are they an aggressive person, are they a shy person, um, you know, what type of personality do they have, and sometimes you can tell within five seconds with somebody and sometimes it takes a couple minutes to pull somebody out and you know find out what their need the biggest thing is finding out what their needs are not what your needs are but what their needs are and then uh, to try and meet their needs mm -hmm. and that's what we do in our profession cool. I know my subject and if I don't know the answer I tell them I don't know the answer to that mm -hmm. but let me write that down and I'm gonna get right back with you and I let me talk to you right after the meeting let me get your information uh, and I'll let me get your phone number, and uh, I'll get right. I'll find out that information the next day and get right back to them. Mm -hmm. I I have before. Uh, I've used a presentation. Uh, we put on a presentation for our membership of what the association does um, for the membership, uh, which is about a 30-minute presentation uh, that uh, I do along with uh, Dave Burnett. Uh, he's our vice president of membership. And so we talk, I talk about the inner workings of the association, and he talks about the benefit side and uh, about membership and uh, what the benefits are of being a member. And, you know, and I talk about the inner structure, the legislative work that we do uh, in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., national, mm -hmm. where the national office is, uh, where this office is, you know, who our staff, you know, who the staff are, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, provide that information, especially to potential members. Do you use the projecting on the screen? Mm -hmm. and that yes. Thing? Yeah, I have a clicker and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and I know that I know each slide, you know, and then I've got it set up on the projector and on the computer in front of me. I mm -hmm. uh, have it set up so I know what the next screen is. So mm -hmm. the screen that's on the left is on the wall. The screen that's on the right is the one coming up. So mm -hmm. I know how to transition into my next, oh. my next piece of uh, mm -hmm. and I have nothing absolutely nothing written out mm -hmm. nothing it's all mm -hmm. just standing up and talking